Matt, we're here for your film Spike Island tonight and it's all about Manchester, isn't it? The Stone Roses coming of age in that period. Tell me a bit about capturing that anarchic spirit of that age on screen. Well, the film is really our love letter to Manchester and to 1990 and to the Stone Roses. So it was really key that we try to get it as close as possible to that time. And I think it's, it's funny because I don't really think of it as being a period film, but of course it is. You know, so it's 30 years out of date, but it's still, as soon as you point the camera anywhere, you're seeing cars which are wrong, you're seeing parts of Manchester which wrong people are wearing the wrong clothes so it's, we spent a lot of time trying to get it as accurate as possible we tried different kind of tricks we used visual effects we obviously had an amazing costume department and uh, you know production designer and we spent a long time just trying to get everything right looking at photos looking at video footage from the time and also the other thing is kind of training our kids to kind of speak in the way they would have spoken in 1990 actually there's a lot of words we had to sit on them we're gonna go no you can't say that because that's that's new you know so um, it, it, it took a bit of work but it was it was really crucial because I think you know audience can sniff it out when it's wrong. You get great performances from the young actors on screen as well. Tell me about coaxing those performances out of them because they really have to have that great bond between them as well, don't they? Right. I, I think the yeah the hardest thing for us on the film was finding our five leads, and you know the whole film lives or dies on, on on the strength of that casting. And so we spent a long time meeting people. Jane Ripley, the casting director, went around Manchester, met people who were still in school, met people who come out, loads of different variations in terms of how experienced they were, and we always felt that the script's quite tricky to get your teeth around you know I think you need a level of experience to be able to, to be the main lead so Elliot and, uh, and Nico have obviously done have had more experience and done more TV than the others but the other guys really get kind of out of, out of college and they're absolutely fantastic so as soon as we cast them then we spent time just getting them to hang out with each other they were learning instruments they were playing playing in a band together and then we also they went off to Amsterdam and they just spent time just traveling and hanging out and that as soon as they turned up on set immediately it paid off because they just feel like like they've known each other all their lives. You mentioned the music there as well. Of course, it's central to the film as well as that coming of age story. How did, the, how much experience did the guys have with music, instruments, singing, and stuff before this? Because they've got a band in the film, right. haven't they? Called Shadowcaster. Yeah, it was. I mean, the, the level of musical knowledge within our five leads was practically zero. There's one of them who plays guitar, and but we ended up making him play bass, which he hadn't done before. So. It was very tricky. I mean, initially I'd said, well, look, like we did on uh, another film I did called Sex and Drugs, we need to cast musicians who can act. But we looked around and actually, it's you know, to pull off what they needed to do in, in the film, I think it needed to be the other way around. You need to find really great actors who might be able to become a little bit musical by the end of it. So it was hard, you know, they worked really, really hard on each of their respective instruments and they spent a lot of time jamming together. Manny even turned up to one of their sessions, they're going to G them up and stuff. So it was, it was good and they used that to kind of bond as well. And then we also used some kind of tricks. I mean, like sometimes well, we even had at one point Nico's hands, one of the uh, the guys who was effectively being his, his hand double, put his arms between his, uh, his armpits and start playing for him. So we're like, there's a few things like that, but mostly they just learned the instruments, which is amazing, really. And tell me about filming in Manchester as well, because it's so central, the location to the film, isn't it? Yeah, it was, I mean, you know, Manchester is really another character in the film. I mean, not just the locations, but just the vibe and, and the language and just the kind of attitude. So in that sense, it was, you know, it was really crucial that we kind of found the right places. And we talked a lot about, uh, you know, finding the exact kind of neighborhood that we wanted to, to show in the film. I think Chris, the writer, in his mind, was thinking about somewhere a bit more suburban, somewhere that was closer to where he'd grown up. And we looked at it and it just felt it wasn't, didn't quite click in the way, it wasn't instantly iconic in the way that we were hoping. So we looked around, it took a long time to try and find an area that, that really worked. We had, you know, when we arrived, actually generally 99% of the people treat us really well, but we, we had a bit of an incident on the first day where someone ended up spraying us with a hose pipe and chucking eggs at us. So that was our kind of, our welcome day one. And luckily it calmed down and he left after that. I'm glad to hear that, definitely. So what can we look forward to next from you, Matt? I'm very much hoping we're going to be doing a TV series called GB84. It's by, well, it's from a book by David Peace, who wrote the Red Riding trilogy. And it's, uh, it's written by Paul Virag, who wrote Sex and Drugs and Ashes. And um, we'll see. I mean, it's like it's always a massive gamble going into any project. You always you know, try hard to go and find the money, and there's a lot of competing voices out there. Then I've also got, you know, I've got a horror film that I'm working on at the moment. I've got a couple of thrillers, so we'll see.